what's going on everybody this is dave sharp welcome to wake up legendary uh i am uh having issues with my coffee pot so i'm probably gonna go run and uh and try to fix that while uh our guest is telling his story here real quick uh as we get started because i'm in without coffee in the morning is a scary thing um so uh let's go ahead and uh Let's get this this show started. Um, as you guys can see, or if you're listening to the, the the replay or the podcast or something, blue collar worker builds Instagram page to 169 followers. Sean, welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Where are you calling in from? Uh, Southern California. Okay, nice, man. Nice. So are you a natural born internet marketer? Is that what you did and have been doing for a long time? Or is this your, is this your first go at it? No, no, no. I've, I've done it in the past. It's, I've done a lot of different things in my life. Um, but after I got out of the military, I, I kind of went down a fitness route um, and was able to, to grab a handful of sponsors. And at the time, uh, back in the day, there wasn't really too much of a social media presence. I think Facebook had just allowed like pages or something like that. So per the contract, we had to have a social media presence. And that's where I kind of got started in the crash course of it. And I did that for about seven years. And um, I really got burnt out on it and went on like a three year hiatus, uh, decided to go back to my roots with working with my hands. And uh -huh. I've been doing that the last three years. And then when I came across uh, Legendary, um, that's when I went ahead and decided, all right, I'll go back into, into the social media presence. Um, and I went completely against uh, my niche. And uh, a lot of people noticed that, but it's, it's worked out well. As long as you have something to talk about that you can honestly talk about, people are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more forgiving for whatever it is mm -hmm. that you, ch you decide to do. So you mean when you started this, people people noticed that you were not doing fitness or uh, something different? So my niche was fitness and dogs because oh, okay. I, I, I did both of those in training, right? I had a, mm. I had a business uh, for fitness for seven years and I had dog uh -huh. training for three years. And that okay. was completely and utterly the only things I ever posted. So wow. three years later, I come out of nowhere and I'm talking about, you know, hey, you know, affiliate marketing and this and that. But then again, three years ago, I didn't, I didn't have a kid, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have a big family to support. And my, my priorities back then weren't the same as they are now. So yeah. going into this niche, it was more about like, Hey, you know, I need to talk to people that are in the same boat as me, you know, working long yeah. hours, have a family are just simply trying to make some side income. Um, yeah. But yeah, all the comments were like, what is this? Where's his dogs? You know, why is his shirt on? That sort of deal. So, oh, it's his shirt on. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, thank, thanks for your service. Before I forget, uh, with oh, I appreciate going that. On, thank you. Going on in the world right now, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that more than ever. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so I I uh, I can relate to the you know the the coming off the the construction site in 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 online. Uh, what was that like for you to, you know, have a little internet marketing experience and then go offline and now come back online now with TikTok and with reels on Instagram and with all these, I, I would say it's, it's a viral internet that we're living uh, in and anybody can play. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I'm going to go run my, grab my coffee, but I'm listening. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely a new experience. When I got off, uh, altogether, it was still just uh, posting pictures and then talking about that picture. And nowadays, it's it's like I don't know. You can do everything when it comes to social media. So that was extremely uh, new to me. But with that being said, uh, luckily with the training that I got from uh, Legendary and how to go about setting up certain things, like for instance, TikTok. I only started my TikTok maybe four weeks ago. Right. Mm. But with the tips that I got from the training, I was able to get it to grow to over 4,000. So, and, and like you had said, my Instagram's at 169,000. Right. But because that was a completely different niche, I get so mm. much more traffic from my TikTok, like way more from my TikTok. 
simply because it's it's so hard for people on my Instagram to be like, all right, I'm I'm gonna slowly start to trust you on yeah. this particular thing, right? Hmm. But when it comes to my TikTok, that's all I'm talking about is trying to to find a side hustle, is trying to to get a little bit more money to be with family and friends and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier for me to do that on TikTok than it is for me to do it on Instagram. But it was definitely a crash course into understanding TikTok. I really don't understand it at all, to be honest. I do a mm. live and I am completely lost. Um, uh, because why I, is it any different than anything else that you've done? Why, why, why is it so, why are you lost? Oh, well, because I look at the lives on TikTok and I don't uh -huh. know if you ever go on them, but a majority of them are a person like standing in front of the camera with like a picture in the background. And I don't know, I guess there are like gifts, gifts that you can give on TikTok, like roses and like other things that are like tiny, tiny little pieces of money, basically. And yeah. the first time I ever looked on a live, it was just a girl with like this thing in the background saying one rose equals a meow and another thing. And it was just people just sitting there like I think you're meowing and jumping lives, jacks. Brother. I think you're yeah. watching the wrong lives. So I'm like, do I got to like, <laughs> I want to sure talk about something. You're not on OnlyFans? Yeah. Sure like, do I have Only to like, do like shirtless jumping jacks in order to like talk about affiliate marketing or something? I was like, this is not what I remember. One yeah. rose equals a meow. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm seeing. So I'm like, okay, so this is, this is what I worked a thousand followers for was the meow for you guys. And then talk about, you know. <laughs> I was like, it's just not working out for me. <laughs> yeah. But Hilarious. that's that's what I had to come into, right? I was used to just posting Hilarious. a picture, talking about that in the caption. And then now it's like, is this is this the route? You know, but yeah. it is what it is. And, and you learn as you go. And it's just, yeah. just with anything in life. Right. Um, so okay, so you're 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 um it looks like you're not afraid to be animated in your content. I was talking to a friend about this the other day um, because they have an offline business and, um, you know, besides setting up funnels and autoresponders and things of that nature, you know, besides setting up the, the, the I guess, the, the technology that you need um, in order to in order to, you know, do online marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're selling information or something, it's, 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 you know, if you're, or if you're selling consulting, or of course, if you're selling anything higher ticket, coaching, consulting, event, course, it's, it's even, maybe even better to get somebody in a webinar or, or a phone call on the back end of your sales funnel. But mm -hmm. before any of this even starts, which is kind of my point to everybody who's sitting around setting up their funnels, you know, I mean, they're, you know, they're, in the back of click funnels and aweber for six hours a day and it's like don't do that just mm -hmm. don't do that. that's that's a that's that's kind of like you have a mcdonald's and you're in the freezer all day just just hanging out just reorganizing the the the, the frozen patties or something you need to get out mm -hmm. there on the street waving the sign letting everybody know that a new mcdonald's is here in town you yeah. know and 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 so i was really talking to my friend the other day who's not an internet marketer about the power of the short form content, you know, and the power of kind of getting off Facebook and getting mm -hmm. out from like your warm circle, you know, like posting to everybody, letting them know you started a business or whatever, which is what we all do when we start a business and getting out onto platforms like TikTok, for example, where in this guy happens to be a, a landscaper. Uh, he does landscaping. He in, 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 you know, our friends, my wife and I's friends, they do landscaping, edible landscaping, stuff like that. And I said, look, there's an opportunity nowadays on a, on a platform like TikTok for you really to become the hunted rather than the hunter. I mean, for yeah. you to become damn near a celebrity, whatever you want to be in your local town, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're, in, and it's weird because uh, the guy who for, you know, decades who put in 20 years of landscaping here locally, you know, that was usually the guy who has the good you know reputation. But nowadays it doesn't matter because no. the people who have 100,000 or 169 followers like you do on Instagram or whatever have more credibility because mm -hmm. it's a number and it's social media and it's 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 it's. it's 
and is all it is is from from creating interesting content. That's yeah. all it is. It doesn't mean that you're more experienced, more knowledgeable. It doesn't mean that you're going to do a better landscaping job than the guy. But it's just because you created better content, yep. and that really requires you to sort of let down your inhibitions, I guess, if you will. And, and get comfortable. And I was just looking at your TikTok and I saw you, you know, spitting out bananas and getting pretty, getting pretty. So talk to us, because yeah, I don't know about you, dude, but in mm -hmm. some areas, as I get older, I get more uninhibited. And in, in, mm -hmm. in other areas, I get more conservative, you know. So yeah. how are you able to, quote, let it all hang out and really create entertaining content to get momentum now in this new niche of make money online versus your, your fitness stuff that you used to do. Talk to us about creating that short form content and what that's been like for you and, and what's worked for you. Yeah. Um, for me, it was more of a, I'm a believer, right? That you have to get out of your comfort zone, right? Even if it's a little bit, but what I try to do is I try to get so far out of my comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm that when I start backing off, I'm still out of that comfort zone that I started off with, right? And I find that middle ground. Mm. So mm. You, if you do that enough, if you if you go above and beyond and way past your comfort zone, you're gonna mm. you're gonna find that middle ground that you're that you that your new comfort zone is going to be in, right? Yeah. So a lot of people that I talk to, they're saying like, well, do I have to be in front of the camera? Do I have to do social media? Do I have to talk? Do I have to do this? You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to. But it's a great yeah. tool. It's a great tool to have, right? And if you went to college or even in high school and stuff like that, you did public speaking, right? And you had to have that piece of paper and you shook and everything like that. And you're you're saying um a lot and man like. So it's just a matter of like stepping. I just said like, but it's just a matter of stepping out of that comfort zone, right? You just you have to force yourself to be to be so far out of it that you're gonna go ahead and, and start getting comfortable just talking regularly um and it has to be consistent it has to be repetitive it has to be over the top sometimes and mm -hmm. it might seem stupid but you, but at the end of the day you're always going to feel stupid right that's what you're telling yourself you already have enough self-doubt in your mind mm -hmm. right you don't need other people to add on to it you already have enough on your own so so for myself it's really tough to be like well you know somebody's going to say something stupid that one comment out of a hundred good jobs it's that one oh shit that you're gonna focus on, right? Mm. And you just you just can't do that. You just gotta mm. gotta gotta keep going because it it'll yeah. it'll pay off in the end because yeah. and I'm not talking about a commission. It'll pay off in the end because someone's gonna want to actually have a conversation with you, and it's just gonna go so smoothly, and you're not gonna be shaky, right? Yeah. And you're not gonna say um a lot. You're gonna be able to talk about it. You're going to be able to believe it because you're trying to be honest. You're trying to be transparent, right? You're not trying to sell anything, right? And that's what always people try to do. They try to sell themselves. You shouldn't have to try to sell yourself. You should just be able to talk about something and just feel comfortable with it. So if I go way outside my comfort zone and do something completely stupid, I'm just simply trying to gain traffic. I'm trying to get your attention. I'm not always yeah. spitting out bananas. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if yeah. me spitting out banana can get you interested in whatever it is I'm talking about in the caption, great. We can have a conversation just like this. Yeah. And I think that, man, you know, it's only us who it hurts. So I think about, and I'm talking to a, a, a military man, you know, so, mm -hmm. Hey, if, 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 if our country was getting invaded, I would like to think I'd be standing up. Okay. Yeah. Fighting for my life, fighting for my country. Okay. But, but, but I start this internet marketing business, right? And it really is my life on the line, man, or any business. You know, if I start a business, I don't care what kind of a business it is. It's got the opportunity and ability to completely change my life, sort of like my my freedom getting removed or getting killed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's got, in my opinion, m unfortunately, money in this world has the ability to move mountains. You know, mm -hmm. it, it does it's resources. And so it can change my life dramatically. Why do you think that I don't get as serious about that or people in general, Sean, about that as maybe you would if, if your life was, you know, on the line, you know, physically and you felt threat, 
why do why do we not get absolute like because you know if 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 i was going to lose my life or my family if i didn't go do the crate you know really get out of my comfort zone or or my, something was going to happen to my family sitting right there i'd be <laughs> Yeah, I'd be getting crazy, bro. You, you know, I mean, I'd be, but, but it's like, because they're not sitting there on the couch with a gun to their head or whatever. Yeah. It's like, I'm just like, Poop, you know, I don't <laughs> want anybody to really, I don't want anybody to really, I don't yeah. want to stand out too much. So how can we get that? I mean, I'm just, I seem like I'm talking to a guy who is able to reach down and in and grab something out of mm -hmm. him that yeah. is a little bit deeper. You got to go a level or two deeper. And and how are you getting through to that to be able to feel comfortable getting so outside of your comfort zone? And and you're even going from the fitness niche to a different niche. So you've yeah. actually got a lot of people who are going WTF. What are you doing? Yeah. Like you had an oh. Instagram talking about fitness and dogs and now you're talking about something else. Yeah. So you're not only overcoming skepticism, you're also overcoming a change of direction. So yeah. how are you reaching down deep inside for that not give up, you know, in 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 really letting it go? It's more more it's because I already have the experience or at least I not to say I have the experience on how to get through it, right? Because I do, but experience comes with failures. And I talked about this in a previous post uh, that I just recently did, where it's like, I have failed so much, so many times, right? Um, that I have so many things that I can, I can, I can take and dig and dig deep from, right? Um, and I've always known, at least it only takes one time to be at the brink of failure or at it, and then having that little bit of light, right? Having that little bit of success. That's mm -hmm. all it takes for me to be like, you know what? I've been in worse situations. I really have. Like, why yeah. Why can't I succeed? And whatever it is I'm doing, right? Like, it's fitness. Why can't I succeed in other areas? I don't want to just be known, you know, about health and fitness. Why can't I be knowledgeable in other areas why can't i help out people in other areas and i have lost so many followers right because of this and if it was all about the followers then i would just go right back into into fitness and that's that's mm -hmm. it right but this path that i see i see the testimonials of people just like me right and the fitness world and i keep on talking about that but it's such a toxic industry. And that's the biggest reason why I got burnt out was because health was, was being shown at a level that's unattainable, unhealthy. And I didn't want to work in an industry where I'm trying to do my best to show you a healthy way. And you're still going to look at it and compare me to the guy on steroids and say, well, that looks more healthy just because it's more aesthetic. Right. But with this, with what we're doing right now, the testimonials are like, I can show you a guy that's working 16 hours a day, 24 hours a day, has two kids, and he's able to make some life-changing income. You cannot argue with me on that. Like, it's mm. done. I'm showing it to you, right? Mm. No one's going to argue with you on that. So for me, it's just being able to see the testimonials and see the proof in the pudding. As long as I know that it's there, as long as I know that it, it actually does what it says it does and the, and the possibility is there, I can go through any sort of toxic, negative comments because those people are simply not putting any effort in or those people have failed and they have got comfortable with failure, right? Mm -hmm. And I refuse to do that, refuse it, right? Not, not only because it's me, but now I have a family to take care of, right? If it was just yeah. me, I, I can sit back and I'm play listening. video games, get fat, right? But now I have a wife. Now I have a kid. Now I have another kid. So at the end of the day, if I ever feel sorry for myself, I got to look at what they're going to think of me in the future. And if I can't look back and say, hey, did I try everything? Did I absolutely try my absolute best to try to build a future, right? That plant the tree so your kids can sit in the shade sort of deal, right? Yeah. Like, am I actually doing that? And if I can look at myself at the end of the day and I said, hey, I tried everything. Well, what is it that you tried? Did you try getting out of your comfort zone? Did you try everything? Like, or did you hold yourself back going like, oh man, 
I hate talking in front of camera. No one wants to, no one cares. No one cares. No one cares if you're good looking or not. Right? Like no one cares if you, if, if you can speak very well or not, what they care about is, are you giving value to what it is that you're trying to promote that you're trying to talk yeah. about? And if it has value, they're going to listen. It doesn't matter if it's coming from your face or if it's coming from words that you type out. If it has value, yeah. they're going to listen. So if you truly believe what you're talking about and what you're trying to promote has value, that's all that matters. At the end of the day, it's up to you just to say, did I do everything to try to get that message out? And if you didn't, then you have the next day to try again. But you have no one to blame but yourself, right? And that's the way I look at it. At the end of the day, I have no one to blame but myself. And if I'm failing, it's something that I'm doing, not that someone else is doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... That's a that's a mandatory mindset, you know, if you're going to succeed yeah. and uh, it's hard to tell somebody that you have to have that because, well, it, you know, then it looks like I'm trying to not, um, you know, deliver on the training that I sold. But the truth is, mm -hmm. is that I'm past that place in my career where I'm really giving two shits about what everybody says about me. Uh, and the fact is, is that you're right. You, you, um, you do have to take responsibility and um, me, or any of us here at Legendary, or anybody else anywhere in the world who creates training um, that that you don't have success from, or anybody doesn't have success from, if the training was shit, the training was shit. But if the training was good and you didn't implement it, well, it's just that simple, you know. And, yeah. and it's pretty black and white. It's not like a gray area. And um, and winners winners win in in everything that they do. You know, that's kind of what I noticed. How you do one thing is how you do everything. And the patterns that have sort of, you know, followed us from other things we've done in the past tend to continue to follow us mm -hmm. until we become aware of them and say, no longer, you know, I'm not going to let that idea or limiting belief run my life anymore. Um, what limiting belief did you have to deal with? I mean, what what silently were you battling that everybody didn't know about when they were watching you on camera? Well, um, I mean, self doubt is always a killer of dreams. You know, I think everyone does it, but I, I get anxiety to this day with anything that I do. I mean, and mm -hmm. I could, I can feel like I have the best training for it, right? But at the end of the day, anxiety. I, I have the worst battle with it, with internal demons. Um, mm. But that's the thing about social media, right? That we always talk about it. They can, you can always put your best foot forward and no one mm. will know what's going on in the background. Um, mm. It's not something that I've overcome. It's not something that, you know, that's in the back seat anymore. It's something that I deal with on a daily, ba uh, on a daily basis. Right. Um, but it's one of those, it, it'll never go away. And I don't think anyone truly believes that it will. So my limiting belief is simply, um, I just don't want to be a failure in my, my kid's eyes, my wife's eyes. You know what I mean? Like, mm. um, I can know at the end of the day that I'm doing everything that I can, but my, my, my biggest fear is that no matter how hard I work, I, I could possibly be a failure in their eyes. Mm. And that kind of puts me a little bit past, I'm gonna cry. Uh, that kind of puts me a little bit past um, what I'm trying to do because I'm really, I'm really just trying to not be a disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good, man. It's all good. I mean, you know, let it out, brother let it out. I mean, it's, it's, I can relate to that. You know, I can relate to that. Um, I really can. And, 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 um, as your children grow up and you look at them and, and you, you, you know, how old are your kids? Uh, I got 18 months and then my wife is, uh, pregnant with our second son. Oh shit. I mean, you're fried in it. You're fresh in it. So yeah, there's, it's great. It's great. You should be feeling all the feelings that you're feeling. You know, I mean, that's that's just a um, that's just a man who wants to not let his family down, you know, yeah. and uh, that's all that is. And, and, and I can relate to that. And, 
you know, find a why that's big enough, my friends, that makes you cry. You know, find a why that makes you cry. That's what they say, right? You know, it's like if your why don't make you cry. <laughs> if your why don't make you cry, dog. Well, I do have it on a shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do have it on a shirt. You know, I'm not fucking around out here. I got my why. Um, but, you know, man, it's it's a it's a great thing. This business has built a lot of a lot of uh, financial stability in my life. It's brought my family closer together. Uh, it's given a, you know, a high school dropout and a teenage father and a former construction worker like yourself uh, a shot in life, um, a shot to be somebody, a shot to do something useful, a shot to, you know, be more than a, you know, what I, what I probably would have been. I mean, I'm not saying I, I wouldn't have been able to find people to give me a chance, but I had a record when I uh, came into this industry from my early twenties being arrested for drugs and different shit that I, that I was doing. And this industry gave me, thank God it's unregulated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there was nobody there to say, you know, Dave, you can't, you can't play here, you know, because yeah. I realized that I really wanted to help people. I wanted to, I wanted to do right by people. I wanted to be value. I wanted to be valuable. And uh, I wanted to be valuable like you to my family. I also wanted to be a productive member of society. And I wanted to contribute to other people's lives as well. And that's what I like so much about this. Um, you know, I, I like I like this business, uh, unlike other things, um, because there is no there is there is, you know, I can't imagine what it'd be to be a trainer, you know, get, it's, it's, I mean, getting somebody to that, that chiseled, you know, like product is a lot of hard work, but here I get to see somebody every day making their first commission. I get to talk to people every day who are quitting their jobs. I mean, it's, it's, it's really actually exciting and it's been yeah. exciting for over 10 years to see person after person have these, you know, breakthroughs and, and have these, but th these these life changing transformations, not just financially, but but also in a place that I feel is just as important or more than the physical physique is internally the yeah. mental game, because I need that to accomplish anything. So thanks for sharing your heart today, brother. And um, yeah. we're, we've got, a you know, a lot of people here who are getting a lot of value from this. And um what would you say to somebody who who's sitting on the based on your experience going through the challenge and so forth in the education? What would you say to somebody who's sitting on the fence? So what I try to tell people is because because when they see the challenge, right, um, at least what I'm seeing a lot of people talk about is they kind of just they kind of just put it on one path, which is affiliate marketing only. Right. What I saw from the challenge. Right. Because I came across it on an account that I didn't follow. Right. And mm. it, it was a cheesy video. Right. And I looked at it and it was just, I work one to two hours a day. I make six figures in this much time. You could do it too. Right. And I was like, Ugh. and then I saw it was like, <laughs> all right, $7, whatever. I can waste $7. Right. I do it every day. Um, yeah. And I told myself, if I learn something from $7, $7 is well spent. If I lose the yeah. $7 and I didn't learn a damn thing, $7. Right. Um, and thank God I did. Because when I went into it, I didn't care about affiliate marketing. I didn't know too much about it. Um, I just simply wanted to see if I could learn something to do in my free time. What I walked away with from the challenge was so much more. Um, I, I think because I had a business for so long and I got burnt out and then I sold it and went to other things. Um, I saw every single thing that I failed on during that challenge in, in a hmm. good way, right? It, it didn't disappoint me during the challenge. It simply told me, man, man, if I had this challenge, this training back when I had my business, huh, I wouldn't have gotten burnt out. I mean, like it would have hmm. saved me so many headaches and so much time away from my family. And, and then that, and that's, that's what I got from the challenge. People are, are looking at the challenge and they're trying to see how it can make them money, right? Mm. You need to see the skills and the education, right? Don't focus mm. on money. Focus on where it can help you with other things. For instance, since doing the challenge, yes, I've, I've made 
good side income, right? But just being able to talk about what I've learned has already given me opportunities where people have reached out to me about being like, yeah. hey, you know, have you thought about digital marketing? Hey, we have an opening at our company. Do you think about this? You know, you can learn skills in the challenge that have that don't play a part, right? In in affiliate marketing or anything like that. You can learn skills from the challenge that can get you a job with another company, right? That can get you a position doing something uh, in the corporate world if that's what you choose to do. It's not about trying to be your own business all the time. It can simply be getting skills that can get you into something else that that has stability that you like, right? So that's what I try to tell people that end up doing the challenge, that end up wanting to be a part of what I do, is I try to tell them truly understand what the challenge is trying to teach you. If you truly understand what the challenge is trying to teach you, you will understand the endless avenues that you can talk about and not focus so much on just one, right? Because that's just going to make you when they start asking you questions, you're just going to want to just zero back into this other into this one specific thing that you want to focus on. It's not about what you want to focus on. It's about them. It's about the person that's asking the questions. You have yeah. to be good and understand exactly what it is in order to talk about it. And that's what I got from the challenge. I dove headfirst into the deep end and I wanted to understand all of it, even if it doesn't pertain to me, even if I'm not going to sell a digital product, I'm not going to have one on one coaching. or I'm not going to do certain things. I wanted to understand it all. Right. Mm. Because if I understand it all the, to the best of my abilities, it just gives me that much more confidence in being able to talk about it and finding something that might work for the person next to me, you know, because yeah. they might not do what I want to do. They all, right. They all don't exactly. Talk to people, you know, great advice. Um, yeah. I think, I think Sean's saying, start the challenge people. I mean, it's, that's, that's basically what I tell <laughs> that's, that's like, that's like, Okay, communication is key for me, right? Like doing the goofy videos or or anything like that. That is just just to get you interested. In the caption, yeah. I always tell people, and this is just me. I always tell people in the caption, all jokes aside, if you absolutely want to know more and you have serious questions, I can't get them all out in a 15 like second that. video, right? I like Talk that. to me. Communicate I like with that. me. And the thing that I've been doing with Instagram a lot, because what I was doing was I was writing these long messages. And I was replying the same way to every everybody, right? Because everyone has the same question, learn, I wanna know more. So I would copy and paste and I'd send it and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that anymore. So what I do with Instagram is I do audio messages, right? Mm. And I it, it opens it up on such a personal level and I'm gonna make a post right after this showing a message that I got this morning, right? Where it's just nothing but audio messages. And then the girl goes, you know what? you genuinely sound like you want to help other people. And I really like that. And that's why I signed up for the challenge. She just signed up last night. Right. Nice. And that's what I do. I need, yeah. I need you. When I talk to the person, I say, I need you to understand that I'm not trying to get you to buy something. I'm trying to share something that I already went through and I know it has value. And if you, if you seem like you're in the same boat as I am, try it. All you have to yeah. do is try it. You know what I mean? Are you listening, and, people? Are you listening, yeah. people? And that's and that's what usually gets them to go. Go, you know what? You know, like at the end of it, yeah, that that does sound like it could be an opportunity. And I always tell people, by the end of it, if you don't like it, you don't like it. But you, at least you yeah. know a little bit more about it rather than just guessing, you know, and being yeah. like, hey, that was an opportunity I might have passed me up because I didn't even I didn't even give it a thought. At least you gave it a thought this time. And that thought just cost you $7 and you're much smarter on the way out. So I'm going to give some absolutely ridiculous advice right now. And it's completely piggybacking on what you're doing right now and saying, but I want to point something out is that a lot of this is acting like, you know, what you're talking about. Hold on a second, Dave. Wait, what did you just say? Are you the CEO of legendary marketer? Did you really just say some crazy off the wall shit like that? I did. And and the reason why I said it is because nobody is going to believe somebody that doesn't f seem like they're confident about what they're talking about. Mm. And so there's ways to be humble, yet clear and direct. And there's ways to be to be honest and still be confident. There's ways to know absolutely nothing about marketing or nothing about your niche and still be confident on video. 
Mm-hmm. And, and you have to remember that the number one thing that's going to get people to listen to you is your confidence. Now, let me give you a crazy ass example. Anybody ever heard of Jim Jones? Anybody ever heard of Adolf Hitler? Anybody ever heard of Vladimir Putin? Anybody ever hear of a lot of these people? Now, unfortunately, a lot of people were born into countries and that's what they, you know, that sort of was all they knew from childhood. But you don't think that the power of confidence is so powerful that it can get people to do some of the most extraordinary things that we can't even wrap our heads around. So imagine what confidence can do if you use your powers for good, you know? Yeah. Um, imagine what it can do if you use your powers for good. And, and we see that every day. We see that with people like yourself. I mean, you mm-hmm. are an example of somebody who doesn't know everything about marketing. You don't know. I mean, as a matter of fact, you've admitted several times throughout the last 39 minutes that you're new in this. You're, mm-hmm. you, you're, in, in some respects, you're parroting what you've heard in reteaching and repurposing mm-hmm. before maybe you've even used it for long periods of time. And I realized that was one of my gifts too, is that, you know, I could take something and then I could re-explain it or reteach it to people over here, mm-hmm. even if I just learned it. And, and if you too have that same ability and you're listening, you you have that gift to take something and then re-explain it, or you don't. It doesn't matter. Here's my point. Confidence is everything. Speaking with confidence in the camera, even if you don't believe it yourself, even if you don't believe in yourself, even if it's a little, you know, you're, you're insecure and shy in real life, what I'm telling you, and the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because Nobody's going to follow somebody that they feel the person is unsure of where they're going because we all, it's our lives and we are not going to be shepherded by somebody who does not know where they're going. But if you seem like you know where you're going and it's always a test, we don't know until we get there, but if you seem like you know where we're going, we're going to be a lot more apt to listen. And you know, that's just human nature. And so, you know, Sean, I don't know, you seem like a confident guy, but, but have you found that to be true? I mean, I only say that because maybe you haven't struggled with that, but, but, but can you, can you speak to that? I mean, I want to make this point. I've always wanted to make this point to people, but I've felt like, Ooh, is that, you know, that sounds like, should I even be saying that I'm calling myself an educator, but truthfully now at this point in my career, I don't really give a shit. I just want to tell people what works and what's true. And what's yeah. true is if you're confident talking about what you're, what you're in, and of course we hope that you have good intentions and you're going to, but it makes a massive difference. And yeah. have you, can you speak a little bit more to the acting as if, have you done any of that? And how, how can we help people today get more confidence? Well, the first thing that, that helps me with speaking to people like that. Yeah, confidence is key, right? But I have confidence in what I'm saying because I know that I'm not going to lie about it. I know I'm not going to bullshit you about it, right? Okay. Like I said, I'm new to this. I make that very clear. I don't make crazy mm-hmm. claims. I don't promise you the world, right? When I talk to a person, I give them the and I'm and I end I end that first audio usually typically with ask me anything. I will be as honest and transparent as I possibly can, right? And the thing with the military was early on, you know, I'm an airman. I am stupid. I don't know anything. And you're going to get grilled by people, your superiors all the time. And the worst Mm. thing you can do is try to pull an answer out of your ass that they know Mm. that you're, you're full of shit on. Right. Mm. What you need to say is, I don't know that, but I will get you the answer by the end of the day. Right. Mm. Just, that's all you need right. to do. If they ask right. you a question right. that you don't know. Just so when people ask me a question that I don't know, right? And this is a great thing about the 15 day challenge that people tend to, to just not want to talk about for some reason. I have no clue why not. You have Zoom calls with an advisor three times. I let that be known. Hey, you know what? I can only talk to you as somebody that went through what you're going to possibly go through. I can be that mentor 
you know, and tell you what I thought and what worked and everything like that. But at the end of the day, if I don't have the answer, there is an advisor during that challenge yeah. that is there yeah. to answer those questions. And what I found out personally when I went through the challenge was every question that I had, every question that I had was answered in the next lesson. Right. And I just didn't have the yeah. patience to, to shut up and just keep walking. Right. <laughs> right. And that, and that is typically what happens. People stop it, it when there's a question that arises and they just halt rather stop. than going stop. forward. Keep listening. Right. Right. right? So, yes. That, and that's what I keep telling people. Every single question that I had was answered in the future lessons or they were answered it's by hilarious. the advisor. So yes, yeah. I, I always tell them, you can ask me anything and I'll do my best to answer it. But if I know that that answer is going to come up, I just tell them, hey, it's going to come up. Stay there. Everything right. you need to know is going to come up. I promise you it is. Right? Yeah. So I tell them, finish it. And if you still mm. haven't gotten the answer to certain questions, then hit me up. But I'm always here that. in case you need it. I'm always here. So I, I love that. I take a very personal route with everyone that signs up for the yeah. challenge i make a list i know who's on it i follow their progress right and depending on what days they're on or if they're having done starting yeah. or like that i always reach out and i say hey i see you're on this day you know you should be around here what's going on hit me with questions if you got them have you set up an appointment with your advisor this and that now it's not to shit on anyone else that's an affiliate right but talking from personal experience the person that I got, right, the, the girl that I found, she has never reached out to me. And I've never reached out to her, you know? So, yeah. it's, it's whatever. And, no and, that, and that in some ways is the benefit of affiliate marketing. But but yeah. you're offering additional, and that's great. Yeah. And that's a great yeah. example of offering bonuses and offering exactly. coaching and offering additional things that will make people want to sign up through your affiliate yeah. link versus another affiliate. I mean – talk about entitlement or that you're not, you know, we were talking about uh, uh, similar to entitlement. Like I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not owed anything. You know what I mean? Like oh. the truth is, the truth is, is that, um, that we have a thriving community, but other affiliates, um, you want to get the credit for the sale, not them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that, I don't know how else to say it. So, oh, yeah. you, you know, you, you have to, it, you don't have to, but I mean, what you're talking about right now is simply making it clear to people additional support and training that they get um, if they sign up through your affiliate link. Another thing that I want to point out just before we, we gloss over it and I don't say anything about it, what the other thing that you're doing is a masterful thing that I want to point out. And it's about referring people to training and tools versus trying to answer everything yourself. This is a big thing that I use every day. And, and the reason why I use tools and I use videos and I use blog posts or I use the challenge instead of having all of our advisors explain and try to teach everything as somebody goes is because those tools I've done it and recorded it once, and now I can refer people back and know that they're going to get the exact same quality answer every single time. So another thing is, is if you find people who have the same question over and over again, find a quality resource that you can direct them to. Find a quality resource. Find a third party. As an affiliate, I this is a freaking masterclass. Find a a a a a tool, find a third party, somebody, something that somebody else wrote. So it doesn't look like the, the biased you created it. Find a third party thing that you can use to overcome or to answer a common question that you get. Yep. Um, I you know, that. because, because the more you put pressure on yourself to know all the answers and to, quite frankly, even if you did know all the answers, answer all the questions each and every day, you have to, as a good affiliate, realize you don't have to be the expert. You don't have to really know much at all like you're talking about, Sean, mm -hmm. but you have to be great at directing traffic. Does yeah. that feel like it fits? Yes, that that is 100%. I just have to get I just have to get the foot in the, in the door, right? 
you guys really kind of take care of a majority of the stuff, right? So yes, we have a we have a marketing auto a sales system that once yeah. you but yes, the affiliate has to engage the person. You got to yeah. get them interested. Yeah. You don't have to sell them anything, but you no. got to get them interested with valuable bait. I think that's the biggest thing. People have to get that out of their mindset. You don't have to sell them anything. That is not your job, right? And I think that a majority of people just they put that on themselves. I think yeah, they forget that. And that just adds more stress because well, a lot of times people just bring it up before they even get started and they say, yeah. I gotta sell something. They use it as a as a reason not to even get started. I I believe. Patience is key on so many levels with this, and you can put it in so many different aspects, right? Patience is also key in the sense of don't try to to take a leap, take a step, right? Or I tell people I, um, they want to know about the advanced stuff, right? Like, oh, tell me about this and that. And I'm over there like, you know, you're trying to ride the motorcycle before you even get on the on the bike. You yeah. need to slow down. Like, I have yeah. no problem talking about that stuff. But let, let's at least go through the same things first before we hit we, we, we hit on that. And that's what I always try to get uh, get with people. But that's that's it's very rare because, you know, like by the time that they're asking that stuff, they're on board. They understand it. They've gone through what I've gone through and they see the bigger picture. Um, yeah. But the, the thing is, not everyone is going to go down the route that I go down, as we just talked about. Right. I haven't spoken with yeah. the person that, that I got the training from. I use my previous experience with with and, personal and that, training. And you and you may not that. I mean, you not not every person is an affiliate for legendary too, you know, exactly. and quite frankly, I just want to say that you guys as affiliates, it's not, it's very common in affiliate marketing for the referring affiliate not to get in touch with the customer. I mean, I just want to yeah. say that, that this is this is the one distinct difference between MLM and affiliate marketing. What we're doing is that we're not paying, you know, affiliate one level comp plan doesn't pay down levels. So you don't have to focus on team building recruiting or worry about earning off of your team so all the focus just put gets put on recruiting and not selling products like we want to make sure that we keep the product the number one focus and not mm -hmm. recruiting pre people and earning off of them um so i i just want to i just want to clarify for everybody who's listening that um you know it it, it and, and for you too sean it actually is m more common than not to never yeah. hear from your referring affiliate when you've bought a training or something on a yeah. from a just a typical affiliate program you know like if you yeah. got into an mlm though you can better believe that your sponsors let's make that list of friends and family let's get that first home and hotel meeting booked you know but um you're I'll going you above what, and though. beyond and and you're going above and beyond and, I, and i'll tell you there the, that's why you're getting a good start i mean you're offering bonuses you're offering um you know, you're offering support. This is the type of things that that give people a great head start is to over deliver, make yourself more available, give more bonuses at the beginning to get things off the ground. Look, and I'll say this, okay? I think, and this is just me because, you know, the audio messages are something that I just started to do, but I'm having really great success with it. I'm really enjoying it too, the conversations. I will yeah. say this, if That's you cool. are it's not- better than typing. Oh, oh, hands down. If you're not good or you think that you're not very good at talking, right, and you don't want to get in front of the camera or whatever, this is a perfect little thing to try and get into instead of typing everything like yeah. that. Just try speaking I, what I you're going to type. Obviously, you can delete it and everything like that. But if you can start doing audio messages and you're going to get more comfortable talking and talking and talking, do you not think that this is going to roll over into a different aspect of what you're trying to do, right? Yeah. At, at the, at everything's the practice everything's everything. practice for the, for the next thing yeah. right at the beginning all my tiktok videos were following kind of try following what what was working with other people right not talking putting up captions or doing lip syncing yeah. and putting up captions but at the end of the day i feel like the personal level is is my strength right so by practicing so what is your strength the, the personal level, actually talking with my oh, own. Oh, right, right, right. Right? Sure. And and actually showing emotion, okay? One-on-one. -on -one. You're saying you're, you're, exactly. you're, you're, you view that as a strength when you're one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, yes. Okay. So I look at the audio messages not only as a great tool, uh, a great way to speak, 
but I look at it as a great tool to roll into my videos. So mm. when I start doing more and more videos on TikTok, I'm going to start veering away from the little catchy things, right? And I'm just going to start yeah. talking straight from the cup about mm. what I'm doing, about, you know, genuineness. Genuine. Why do you think I do this show every day? Right? I mean, Why do you think I, I do this I show it. every day? I get it, right? I want to stay got, sharp. I want to stay look sharp. At, yeah, you got to look at everything as an opportunity to get better. That's it. Don't look at it as an opportunity to close. Don't look at it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to get a sale. Just look at it as an opportunity to sharpen that knife, right? You're yeah. sharpening your skills. You're sharpening your skills. That's, that is the best way for me to get through a discomfort. I don't mm -hmm. look at it as, okay, well, what am I going to do today to hopefully get a sale? I look at it as, how many videos am I going to do today? Because X amount of videos is going to be X amount of times that I'm getting better at right. my skill swings swings yes so if you start looking swings. at it like that right if you start looking at it like that i think you're going to be able to start putting that discomfort away and that self-doubt away because now you're just focusing it for your for your own benefit in the sense of getting better at your weaknesses don't look at it yeah. as trying to talk to people looking at it as what are my weaknesses and what am i going to do in this video to strengthen those weaknesses i'm telling you yeah. you start on day one by day 30, those videos are not going to be mirror images. You no. are going to be so much more comfortable, so <laughs> yeah. much better at what you're trying to do, right? You're, it, it it's, really hard, is. it's hard for it's hard for me to see growth like now be, because I'm getting, you know, a little bit better. But but back when I first got started, you compare like my first month to my my 12 month video. Mm -hmm. um, wow. <sighs> I mean, it was like fucking dumb and dumber, you know, compared to Sean Connery over here. I mean, I, I, I was, it was dramatic, you yeah. know, at that what? time. I mean, and even a couple of months, it was dramatic. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I, and here's, here's something I just thought of right now. I challenge anyone to go back and their, to their first, like a 30 day challenge, do a video. And then 30 days from now, try to recreate that exact video, but with, with your new skill, right? New comfort yeah. zone. We always talk about like, oh man, that video, when I, that very first video I ever did, look at that. Recreate <laughs> that exact same video. Talk about the exact same right. thing. And I bet you, mm. you're going to be much more comfortable talking about it. Like yeah. it's going to be night and day. You're not, it, it's not even going to be the same video. It might be the same mm. subject matter, but yeah. the way that you present it is going to be so much different. So I'll, I would, I would tell people, use that as a challenge right now. Make a video today, mm -hmm. and then in 30 days, do that exact same video with the exact same subject matter, and then compare wow. them. Wow. That's a good, that's a really, really good uh, way to test your baseline and kind of see, yeah. like, where is, how, what's the shittiest I can do? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 let me, let me do five to videos right today. Now, you know? <laughs> Let, let me just see how shitty the shittiest one is. And then let me compare yeah. that to my best one 30 days ago, you know? And, yeah. and wow, what a way to see yourself grow. Cause I think one of the biggest challenges just human beings have is that especially in short periods of time, it's difficult to sense growth. It's difficult to yeah. see growth. And, and one of the reasons why, of course, we put a lot of emphasis on how many followers and how many commissions I have, because that's a scoreboard that we can all follow. So how do I stay motivated if my scoreboard is still saying zero, but, but I, I do feel like things are changing inside. And I don't want to give up. Yeah. That's a good one. That's all. Because I've had, I've had, <laughs> I've had it where I, I'll go a week when I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm killing it. It's going to be like this every week. And then I go the next week and I'm like, what the fuck oh, did I goose do? Goose eggs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, but, I feel you. But you get re reinvigorated, right? when when the next commission comes in and i'm, ta I'm not yeah. talking about a thousand dollar commission or anything like that i'm talking about any commission two dollar commission one dollar sign commission. of life a sign right? of life oh, oh shit what? my affiliate link is working <laughs> you Look, know? i'll get those one day specials <laughs> pop up i'm thinking i made like a two dollar and eighty cent commission and then i'll see it's a one day special and you get like 40 cents from it i'm like fuck it commission's commission something's yeah. going right at least you know? i know the link's still working right it's it, the link's exactly. not broke so <laughs> i haven't had anything come through today my link must be broke let me go check it and look it doesn't even have to be a commission right 
it just has to be something wanting to show interest. I try to do, I don't try to win the war. I try to win little battles, right? So the goal is always, am I at least putting something out that's showing interest? That is a win, right? Yeah. What is it? People, there was a, the saying like, start your day off with winning something, like make mm -hmm. your bed. You started your day off with, with a win. So yeah. whatever happens in the rest of the day, right? No matter what losses you have or whatever, you start your day off with a win. So let's just keep yeah. it rolling, right? Don't aim for the fucking moon. Start your day off with just putting something out and hoping that someone shows interest. Oh, DM yeah. me wanting to know more, you know? If you got a DM, yeah. you're doing something. Right. Somebody Do walked that. through. Do some, more. Do more, more of that. Yeah. Somebody walked into the store. You know, yeah, you didn't sell them shoes or anything like that, but they walked into the store. So now you got to go back and say, all right, well, well I, I'm getting better at getting them in the store, right? How do I get them to get to the counter? You know, yeah. like once you start getting, it's it's little battles. You start getting more people to be interested, more people to be interested. You know, you're starting to master this one aspect of it. Now you got to yeah. start going ahead and mastering the next one. All right. Yeah. Like people yeah. just want, like I said, people just want to jump straight into, into the big stuff. And it's like and you don't you, have to be really a master of everything ever. No. I, I really think that that's a big, you know, misconception is, is that you really have to grow into this Tony Robbins or this, you know, this this I don't know, this Brad Pitt on camera or something. And, you know, you're you, in order to be making great money with this business or this model, you you really are going to be a transformed person, you know, yeah. and, and it. I do believe in personal growth, but I, I I also know that you really don't have to change a lot to mm -hmm. be successful with this. You really just have to um, you really just have to find what's working at any given moment, at any given time in your business and do more of that yes. and find the shit that's not working and stop doing it. Right. Yep test and change if if your videos are not getting views the first three seconds of your video probably sucks right so work yeah. on your hooks go back through listen to these wake up legendaries watch other people's tiktoks see how right it's like you know we had an episode a couple of months ago to where the guy was like look i started doing these these opening hooks and 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 we we talked about a bunch of them. You guys go back through Wake Up Legendary. It was in the last two or three months, I think. It was one of the most valuable, you know, episodes because he was just like, "Look, I, you know, I'm not a transformed guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not different. I just started using hooks that got people to listen to what I had to say, and I got better at delivering information in short, little, bite-sized pieces, and yep. then giving clear calls to action without being salesy and pushy." and you know, it's like you don't have to become a totally different person. You will in order to keep the success that you that you that you generate versus mm -hmm. throw it all away. Yes, you will have to eventually grow and become a steward of money and you'll have to probably address a lot of demons or addictions. I don't know along the path. But to mm -hmm. get there, you actually don't have to change much. I mean, look at the Wolf of Wall Street. You know how many people have gotten rich in this world? They weren't masters of the universe they just were really good at one thing and they kept doing it so the the big thing is 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 you know if you don't have to become a a a, a you know you don't have to become a, a superpower a superman a batman you don't have to become a totally different person to start earning money and, and making money you just have to make a, a few small tweaks and then do more of what's working and, and cut out what's not sean i i unfortunately have to cut this call long it's not short because i've, I've got an 11 o'clock let's do a round two i would love that absolutely right. well I, and i'm telling you something the, the people are like value 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 so go show uh go show sean some love over on instagram um and uh i'll leave this up as i close the 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 call sean thanks for your time brother thanks for your service take care of your beautiful family i know you will brother thank you so much for having me all right man i'll talk to you soon bye-bye all right, my friends, valuable conversation. Like, man, we could just go, we could just go for hours about this stuff, you know, and, and it's just talking, it's talking shop. It's just rapping about it. It's, I don't know, it just, you become passionate about it. You become interested. I'm, 
just as interested over 10 years later because, you know, this is just, I don't know, it's the most, when you have the power to be able to sort of, it's almost like you, you no longer are wondering who the puppet master is because you can become the puppet master of your own life. It's an exciting thing, you know, so keep down the path, keep up the good work. Um, all of you keep rocking, have a fantastic day. Get out of here. We'll see you back here for another episode.